The reality is that it's so easy to break from a place of great joy, a victory, and a breakthrough to a place of complaining. It is that quick that a miracle just happened, God just gave you a breakthrough, you just had some moments of joy, and before you know the next thing that happened that got you discomforted, you started complaining. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome if this is your first time. I am OM. I am want to talk about a better approach to complain. Complaining in life is like an inevitable thing as a human being because it is just ingrained in us that when we don't like things or when things are not convenient, when we are in a place that it is not what we wanted, we start complaining. We start the expressing our dissatisfaction and displeasure which is actually what complaint means in this angle it is how we react to god when things do not go our way and we get to complain instead of communing with god and this is the truth about this when you get to complain it does not change anything positively instead if it ever changes anything it makes it get worse. Now, instead of complaining, I want you to know these three things and keep it at your fingertips. Pray, praise, and be patient. Instead of complaining, pray, praise God, and be patient. Now, I want to explain this because it could sound so simple. But then, most times, we feel like we are praying. And in our prayers, it turns out to be that we are actually complaining to God. We are not praying. We are just bringing our complaints to God. And this is where most times Christians, as Christians, we find ourselves talking to God as if, you know, we are, we are going to lash out on God. Like, why did you allow this to happen? Why did you allow that to happen? And I'm not saying you should not be real with God. God can take all of that. God can handle your questions, your heart questions that you get to talk to him about. But then if you want to get to a place of faith and trust in God, you have to learn how not to complain in prayer, but how to communicate, to commune in prayer. Because the, the place of complaint is you replacing communing with God. Now, let's, let's talk about real life situation. You have a father. You know your father can provide for you and you run into some issues. It is not your place to come back to your dad and start complaining. Like, you know, you should have sent me this amount of money. You should have done this for me. You should have done that for me, but you did not ask. You should have done this and that for me. I wouldn't have gotten into that trouble. I wouldn't have had this issue. I wouldn't have had that issue. But did you ask? Did you know how to communicate, how to commune? Because you would get to your father and say, oh, my bad. Had it been I knew, I would have asked you for this. I know you would have done it for me. I know you would have settled this debt. I know you would have settled this issue for me. I know you are capable. Now that expresses trust. Note this. When you complain, it, is, it shows a lack of trust in God. When you are complaining to God, it shows a lack of trust in God because first of all, it means you don't trust in his ability. It means you don't trust his heart that he cares for you. Like scripture says, cast your care to the Lord for he cares for you. So we come to this place of pride and human arrogance to feel like I can do this by myself and we try it in our own strength and then we quote the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what do we do? Do we lean on Christ who is our strength? No. We get to do it in our own wisdom, in our own way. And when it goes wrong, we go back to God and start complaining again. Why did you allow this? Why did you allow that? But all I'm saying in today's video is a better approach to your complaint Instead of complaining, because complaint actually leads you to a place of worry and it gets you to a place of anxiety. And scripture says, instead of being anxious and worrying over this and, and over that, pray. And Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 made it so easy. He said to the disciples, why do you people worry? It is people that do not know God that worry the way you do. It is people that do not know God that, you know, complain the way you do. It's people that don't trust God, that don't know his heart, that talk the way you talk. Because if you would trust God's heart, you would know when you have an issue, come to communion. Come to fellowship with him. Through his spirit, talk to him. Daddy, father, this is the issue. This is the problem. This is what I'm facing. This is the sickness in my body. I'm not coming to complain. Oh, this is so painful. I've been struggling with this. I've been praying about this and nothing has happened. No. If you really know his heart, you know that 
this symptom that you're seeing right now is a lying symptom. This problem that is persisting right now is a lying, you know, symptom. It's a lying fact. The truth is that God has already settled it all. You just need to keep trusting him till it's done. Like you can see the manifestation. That's what I mean by it's done. Instead of complaining, pray. Secondly, instead of complaining, praise. And talking about the heart of thanksgiving and praising instead of complaining, I will take you back to Exodus when the children of Israel just got out of crossing the Red Sea. And immediately they crossed the Red Sea after they saw God's mighty hand. God divided the Red Sea for them and they walked on dry ground. They saw this, this old sea, like literally, it wasn't a, a story. These are the same people that saw God use Moses to open up the sea and they walked into it and passed to the other side. And after three days, three days, they have now gotten to the land of Mara. There's no water. Yeah. They are human beings. They need water. So they were looking for water to drink. And when they got to Mara, the water in that place was bitter. Now that's why they called it Mara. But what did they do? They saw God did something amazing. They saw God did something that has never been done. He just opened a way through the river, through the sea. They would just be like, this one is not an issue. If God could divide the water, then turning this water to become sweet wouldn't be an issue. So they would just commune with God and talk to Moses. Moses talked to God, we need a solution to this. Instead, they were complaining about Moses. Did you bring us here to die of thirst? And all of that murmuring, grumbling. And most times we get to this place. God just performed a miracle for us. God gave us a breakthrough. He made a provision to, for us. And we have just seen God's mighty hand in our life. In fact, the best way I would put this is, hindsight is the best way to learn how to praise God instead of complaining. Look back. Instead of complaining, look back over your life and check what are the things that God has really done for you so that this can build your faith to know if God could do all these things and if he brought me to this place, he didn't bring me here to leave me. So if he brought me to this place, he's going to do more. So instead of complaining, I'm going to thank him. Father, thank you for what you've done so far. And I believe the children of Israel in Exodus 15 would have gotten to a place of saying, Lord, we are grateful that you divided the sea. We are not going to stay here and complain about this water that is bitter. And of course, they complained and Moses went to talk to God. God showed Moses what to do. Cut the tree and put in the water and the water became sweet. Now, that is the picture of Christ. In our time, instead of complaining, I would like you to come to a posture of thanking God for Jesus. That is the sweetness in our life in every situation. If scripture says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Why wouldn't you believe that? Because if you don't believe, you can't receive in being your shepherd and coming to a place of not lacking anything, not wanting anything, because all you need is provided. That's what it means. Everything you need is already provided. So you don't have need to even, you know, lack anything. I hope this is helpful already. If it is, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, do so well to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and share it to someone who may need to see this. Now, for you to know that complaining will not help you, as it came to me, I realized that complaining is an act of meditation. You cannot complain without meditating. But now the problem is that you are meditating on the wrong thing. Instead of you meditating on the goodness of God and the favor of God and how God has come through for you so that you can have a heart of thanksgiving and telling him, Lord, I've seen you do great things for me before. This one is not that hard for you. This one is not even an issue. Because if scripture says that with God all things are possible, why wouldn't you take all the things you need to this God who deals with impossible situations? So whatever situation you are facing right now, Complain is not the way out. Because Jesus said that when you worry, which of you by worrying can become taller than you are right now or become thicker than you are right now by worrying? And sometimes as humans, we could come to this place that we are trapped and we feel like maybe I need to worry about it so that it looks like I'm concerned. 
So, like I, I, I'm concerned about it. If you want to do that and you want to be concerned about it, can you change the situation? The question I do ask myself is, if I cannot, if I cannot change the situation, then why take the thought? Even though I still do take the thought and I'm learning so that I would get to a place of, if I cannot change this, if this is not in my capacity to change, I'm going to look up to God who can do all things. I'm going to look up to God with thanksgiving knowing that he will bring me through this. He has brought me through many things over the years of my life. So this end of the year and things not working out won't be where it will stop bringing me through. Because things are tough right now. It will not be, oh, God has stopped being faithful. You know, I read Psalm 77 and I was so inspired. It started by David just complaining about, oh, it feels like, God, do you even care? God, do you even, like, are you looking at me? Does it mean that you've withdrawn your favor from me? And he got to a place of saying, when I complained, I was overwhelmed. When you stay in a place of complaint, you are meditating on the wrong things. And then it gets you overwhelmed, just depressed. It gets you weighed down. And this is the place that scripture tells you, look up and look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And how did Jesus go through his own trials? Who for the price said before him, despise the cross. He despised the situation that was around him. And I would like you to just read that scripture in Hebrews chapter 12 for yourself and just soak yourself into that scripture and learn how Jesus overcame instead of complaining. He had a lot, a lot of reasons to complain. Oh my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? He would have stayed on the cross and just complained the whole time. He, he would have, before going to the cross, he would have just complained the whole time. Father, why would you even make me go through this for these people? Like, do they really worth this? Do they really? Of course, we will not worth him coming to die. But scripture says that he despised the cross, ignored the shame. And what is your situation that you cannot despise it looking up to him? That if he has done good to you before, he will be good to you even now. Now, the third thing is, instead of taking on complaint, be patient. Learn how to be patient. And this is one of the hardest things to tell someone to be when they are going through something difficult. Now, a funny situation is in my place of work, one of my colleagues, whenever she's kind of getting in this mood of being, you know, fiesty and just disorganized, I will just tell her, chill, chill. And she hates it so, like she hates it so much that she'll be like, stop telling me to chill. <laughs> She just stop telling me to calm down. And I'm like, just telling her, just chill, just calm down. And when she calms down, we can easily sort out whatever it is that we wanted to do. And I said that to say that it is not easy to be patient. It is not the word you want to hear when you're going through a difficulty. It is not the word you want to hear, be patient, just be patient. No, you just want to give me a solution to this. Give me an answer. I need, I need an answer. I need a hack. And it's something that you just be like, your this so this is done, like healed, a miracle now. But some miracles will take thirty percent, sixty percent, and then to a hundred percent. It will be a process. Some miracles will be a process. The miracle of your financial breakthrough will be a process. If you are thinking that it should just be, you know, like a fast food immediately, pop, 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 everything is done, and you are like overnight success. Well, that's a trap. That's actually a lie. If God wants to give you sustainable wealth, he will give you the power to get that wealth. And it will always be a process, a process that he has prepared you for so that you will not waste whatever resource he puts in your hand. And whichever case it is, God is calling you to a place of patience instead of you coming to a place of complaint. And now let me explain this deeper because people can mean patience means just sitting down somewhere and being idle. No, patience actually means you are staying in place of faith because faith will require you to be patient. And scripture says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. That word hope is the word that is attached to patience because patience and hope goes hand in hand. When you have hope for something, you wait patiently for that thing. And now it is this thing that you need, that hope as a fuel for your patience. I know God will come true. I know God is able. I know with God all things are possible. With this, I can have the Bible hope that says that I am expecting God to do good to me. It's a confident expectation of good from God. 
that God is going to be good to me and I believe it. Like David said in Psalms 27, I would have lost heart if not that I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I will hope in God. Come to a place in your life that you are taking on the Bible hope, hoping in God that things are going to change. It is not a wishful thinking, oh, I just wish things will change. I just wish by next year things will be better. I just wish before Christmas things will be better. No, I hope and I trust God and I'm believing that God will make things become well. Because if you just wish, it means maybe you're anchoring on the universe to make it happen. I don't know. You're anchoring on life will make this happen. Life will turn around and things. What makes life change? Life doesn't stay on its own and change. It is only God that makes things change on the positive for anyone that believes in him. But on the natural, things don't, doesn't change positively. Instead of ch things changing positively, it goes bad. It deteriorates. You can't leave your garden and expect it not to grow well when you're not nurturing it. That's the natural process. You can't cook a meal today and just leave it like that because you cook the meal. So the meal should just be okay. It should just be good. You need to keep on warming it and preserving it. Without the preservation, it goes bad. So it is God that brings that preservation to our life through Jesus. He is the sweetness like Moses was shown that tree and he cut that tree to put it in the water that was bitter and it became sweet in our lives. The presence of Jesus with us is what helps us to be patient. The presence of Jesus with us is what adds that sweetness to our life that in those bitter places when we were bitter and complaining and, you know, just arguing and getting worried, overly stressed, when we come to Jesus, we realize that with him, all things are possible. We know that he has paid the price for our healing, that we can live in hell. And we realize that by virtue of him getting to the cross, and hanging on the cross, he has nailed principalities and powers, and nothing by any means can hurt us, so we can trample on our foot the serpents and the scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. I hope this video is helpful and, you know, blessing you already. If it is, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and look out for the next video that I will post up. Share this video to someone. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.